Um. Do y'all have the um, live stream control for Facebook to? Going to it. It's on your page, correct? Um, it's on God's female servant. No, Facebook page. Yeah, Facebook page. I think it's God's female servant. Just put your name in it. Come up. Yeah. Um. Can. Sorry, I'm having trouble playing this video. Yeah, it's not your video. Because uh, I have it on pause. Yeah, but I was just trying. It's not showing me where you, you went live. On Facebook? Mm -hmm. um, I paused it. Um, I'm trying to also go on YouTube live, but I'm not getting it. Can you pause the Facebook live stream? Yes. I'll be right back, y'all, that are on Facebook live. Can you pause the um, we're trying to get it connected with the YouTube as well. It's on your page, correct? Um, yes. No. Hi, oh yeah, Jeannie. Okay. Okay. I I live on the Facebook too. That might be it. If if I turn my volume down on Facebook. That helps it out, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Is part of my head cut off? No. Okay. Can, can you hear me on Facebook? Can you hear me on Facebook? When you, I hear the reverb, I can hear you clearly, but there's that echo. Mm -hmm. Is it when okay? you, I hear the reverb, I can hear you clearly, but there's that echo. Okay. The echo is gone now. Okay. Is it gone? The echo is gone now. You don't see me live on Facebook. Do you see me live on Facebook? Michael, do you see me live on Facebook? Actually, I see me live. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay.
Jeannie, I'm so glad you joined us. Copy streaming link. I can put it on Face on um, um, YouTube with the str copy streaming link. I have no idea. Uh, Sorry. Okay, because at this point we're not going to be live on YouTube. Hello and welcome to. Hearing some poetry with me and some of my f favorite poets. In particular, we're going to have Langston Hughes, Mary Evans, and Maya Angelou. Okay. And um, my co-hosts today are M Mr. Michael Marshall and Reverend Moria Santino. And we're going to begin with a poem that was written in the late 1800s by James Weldon Johnson for an Abraham Lincoln program they were doing. And he was thinking about how we're coming out of slavery and how this needed to be something to help the people to look at where we're going, where we've been. And we, he wanted to make it very nice. So he asked his brother Roseman to put the music to the poem. And it became, it was called Lift Every Voice and Sing. And as the years went by, the school children who first started singing the song kept singing it where places where they went. And it soon became well known. And by the 1960s, the people were calling it the Negro National Anthem. And so, I'm going to do Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven rings, rings with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. Sing a song full of the hope that the dark past has brought us. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. He thought about the road and he said, stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We have come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading our feet through the blood of the slaughtered, out of the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. And we have the faith, and he said, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far, on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, 
Keep us forever. In thy path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God. True to our native land. You know, this is Black History Month, and we want to celebrate. And this is my um, celebration, and I'm glad to be able to share it with you. In past, we've had events over at the Lincoln Library that's a couple of blocks from me here in Rochester, New York. And the next poem is going to be the first poem that I wrote in. I didn't know that I could really write poetry. And when they say that you should write from a place that you know, this is called Freedom Bound. Freedom Bound used to be a dream. Freedom Bound now means everything. Freedom Bound years ago used to be a joke, but only to the colored folks. Freedom bound in the years of yesterday used to be a prayer and a reason to strive and fight for today. Now, in the year of today, we must fight, strive, and yes, pray hard. Hard so today won't be only another yesterday. Freedom bound, what it holds for me is pain, struggle, and a longing of freedom. With my head set high and my eyes towards the sky, looking up for help, cause freedom bound is where I'll be. Freedom bound, freedom bound. Freedom bound must come to us all. Freedom bound, say amen, amen. Freedom bound, catch me if you can. There's a, going to be a point as I do these poems that you'll be able to have requests. So if you have some, some of my books, my Inner City Blues, Views from My Reality, or A Long Journey, which is a sacred collection of poetic homilies. And they can be found on Angela Water, Angela M. Waters .com, or and you can email me at God's Female Servant at Gmail. But they also available on just about anywhere that books are sold. So if you haven't already purchased some, please do. Thank you for your support in advance. The next poem is by Langston Hughes, and I love me some Langston Hughes. One of the reasons that I love him, not because he was one of the poets of the Renaissance, the Harlem Renaissance, but I know that he used to live in Topeka, Kansas, and that his grandmother, whom he lived with at some point had petitioned the school board, 501, hello, before the Brown versus Topeka Board of Education class action suit that brought desegregation, made it, made segregation outlawed in the schools. He used to live in Topeka, Kansas, and his grandmother won her case. And he also used to live in Lawrence and other places. So this one is called The Negro Mother. Children, I come back today to tell you the story of a long, hard way that I had to climb, that I had to know in order that the race might live and grow. Look at my face, dark as the night, yet shining like the sun with love's true light. 
I am the child they stole from the sand 300 years ago in Africa's land. I am the dark girl that crossed the wide sea, bringing in her body the seed of the free. I am the woman who worked in the field, bringing the cotton and corn to yield. I am the one who labored as a slave, beaten and mistreated for the work that I gave. Children sold away from me, husbands sold too. No love, no safety, no respect was I due. 300 years in the deepest south, but God put a song and a prayer in my mouth. God put a dream like steel in my soul. Now through my children, I'm reaching my goal. Now through my children, young and free, I realize the blessings denied to me. I couldn't read then, I couldn't write. I had nothing back there in the night. Sometimes the valley was filled with tears, but I kept trudging on through the lonely years. Sometimes the road was hot with the sun, but I had to keep on till my work was done. I had to keep on, no stopping for me. I was the seed of the coming free. I nourished this dream that nothing could smother. Deep in my breast, the Negro mother. I had only hope then, but now through you, dark ones of today, my dreams must come true. All you dark children in the world out there, Remember my sweat, my pain, my despair. Remember my years heavy with sorrow and make of those years a torch for tomorrow. Make of my past a road to the light out of the darkness, the ignorance, the night. Lift high my banner out of the dust. Stand like free men supporting my trust. Believe in the right, let none push you back. Remember the whip in the slaver's track. Remember how the strong and struggling life strife still bar you the way and deny you life. But march ever forward, breaking down bars. Look ever upward at the sun and the stars. Oh, my dark children. May my dreams and my prayers impale you forever up the great stairs, for I will be with you till no white brother dares keep down the children of the Negro mother. <sighs> the next poem I'd like to do is from Mary Evans book called Man Oh Man and Mary Evans was my great grandmother she she um, was born in Jackson Mississippi at the turn of the 1900s and by the late 30s, she had written a book, and she was also a missionary. And she wrote the book, it had three poems in it. But they are so powerful that, excuse me, I have to take a drink. They are so powerful that I believe that they will even speak to your heart today. The first one is called, Man Has Fallen, and it's about the whole Bible, and it goes from Genesis to Revelation. <coughs> Excuse me. Man Has Fallen. Let there be light, and there was light, and God said that it was good. He called the light day and the dark night just like a great God would. He divided the waters, stretched out the land with that unseen, powerful, magnificent hand. He rolled back the heavens with clouds everywhere. The sun, moon, and stars, he placed them there. After our image, let us make man 
to have dominion over all the land, the beast of the forest, the fowl of the air, and the creeping things all everywhere. <coughs> <coughs> In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God placed them in a garden there with everything but one to share. Six days of labor, God rested the seventh. Our great creator of earth and heaven, this world was such a holy place when God created this human race. But man, oh man, just look at you now. How is it you've fallen somehow? You rock and sin like a drunken man, too sober to fall, too drunk to stand. Drunk, drunk from the cares of this life, hating, greed, living in strife, men fighting, dying day by day. You've left off to watch, also to pray. Yes, you drift on with the tide, down the stream for wicked and wise, to kill for land, to die for gold, to gain the whole world and lose your soul. But Jesus said this time would be wars and the sign of the fig tree, famine and earthquakes in diverse places, rumors of wars in all races. But stop, stop, man, don't drift on. Though many years have come and gone, repent of your sins while there is time. For salvation is free for all mankind. Amen. My great-grandmother was also a missionary. And... And she used to teach us things like how to wash up. And she said, you know, you, first you wash as far down as possible. Then you wash as far up as possible. Then you wash possible. And I thought that that was good. And then as I got older and started understanding in the, that the, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual, I thought about how if you wash as far down as possible, you're going to have your eyes clean. Your mouth is going to be clean. Your ears are going to be clean. Your hands, all of that's going to be clean. And then if you wash as far up as possible, your feet are going to take you to the right places. Your legs are going to move and carry your body to the right places. You're going to find yourself with the right people. And then... You wash possible with just your reproduction area. So you reproduce after your own kind. But that's another tale. The next poem is also by my great grandmother. And this middle picture is my great grandmother. Her name is Mary Evans. And this poem is about a man who related his vast life to her as death was approaching. And God helped her to put his life into poetry. Now think as I speak, his funeral was held at night to represent the life that he lived. It's called A Gambler Dies. And I know some of you have heard this poem before, but I hope you still enjoy it. She said, I was called to the bedside of a dying friend one day. The TB germ had captured him. His debt was hard to pay. As I entered his room, which was rather bare, just bones he lay. His flesh had all gone, his eyes seemed to stare. He said, sit down, my friend. Do have a seat. Friends like us so seldom meet. I have a tale I want to tell. To you, my friend, I know so well. This tale goes back to years ago. When I was just a child, you know, climbing upon my mother's knees, begging if she still loved me. My dad left home when I was small, though not my mother's fault at all. She taught me Jesus crucified. For you and me, he bled and died. 
but I grew up as youngsters do. Reckless, kind-hearted, and true. But when I thought I was a man, hmm, my mind took on a different plan. The world reached out and called to me. I answered back, too blind to see. Old Satan who said I was a man, my poor old mother didn't understand. Well, as the father, so the son. When my day's work was done, I left my mother sick in bed. I wrote back home, but she was dead. Poor dear mother. This grieved me so, but how was I going to know that someday I'd need her smiling face, that no one else could take her place? Some folks drink and never gamble. I did both, and then I rambled. Dance, drank all night long. Whiskey, wine, women in song. I won my name one gambler night. Won all the money they had in sight. Gambler night, I won with fame. Most every gambler has a name. The days they came, into years they went. Of many nights I sat and spent, watching the cards around the table. To keep this up, wasn't able. Little by little I started to cough. I tried to gain the weight I had lost. Day by day I faded away. I never thought to stop and pray. Now my money is gone. So are my friends. Just like all worldly things do in. But I was too wild and foolish to see when the world first invited poor me. Now from day to day in bed I lay. No mother dear to come and say, how do I do? Well, if I feel like I could eat a decent meal. I am just bones. Please, look at me. Do come up close. Now can't you see? I'm sinking fast, fast as can be. Dying like a faded tree. I heard the doctor when he said, when he pronounced this body dead, these pains I then no longer bear, nor this cruel world no longer cares. My eyes are dim, I just can't see. That cold, dark grave awaits poor me. I was a gambler, not by trade, but oh, the poor mistake I've made. As a tree falls, so does it lie. As a man lives, so shall he die. Oh, Satan awaits here at my side. Too late, I'm lost. A gambler dies. I'm going to share another one of my uh, Langston's poems called Mother to Son. And he wrote this poem really because he was going through a depression. He had lost his job and he was in between. And he had this friend named Miss Dorsey that he really liked and she would encourage him like a mother. And she told him, she said, well, son, life for me ain't been no crystal stairs. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor. Bad. But all the time I've been climbing and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the night where there ain't been no light. So don't you... Turn back, honey. Don't you sit down on them steps because you think life's kind of hard. Don't you fall now. Because I still the climbing. I still going on. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. My Angelou is one of my favorite. And 
she wrote this one poem. Well, she wrote lots of poems that I really like. Phenomenal Woman. I really like Still I Rise. And so I'm going to do Still I Rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I'll rise. Are you, does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my own living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cry? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't take it too awful hard. Cause I laugh like I got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise? That I dance like I got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Out of a past rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean leaping wide, wailing, swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that is wondrously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. At this time, we're going to have a request. If there's anyone out there that would, that has a request, we will take it at this time. Well, Reverend Bamford, I've never been bashful. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask that you read from my inner city blues, my country tis of thee. This is a poem that I wrote when I was a foster grandparent in South Charleston, West Virginia. And I used to watch the children reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. And then they were talking about the pilgrims. And oh, it was really too much for me. And so, and I couldn't. In all honesty, pledge allegiance to the flag. Because from my reality, it's not, it doesn't have liberty and justice for all. And this is one of the poems that reflects some of that time in my life, what I was thinking. My country tears of thee. My country tears of thee is not my reality. Mostly injustice I see done to people who look like me. Sweet land of what liberty? Liberty to suffer and be counted less than what God made me to be? Land where my father died in his early 60s, drug addicted and fighting the pain of what this sweet land proclaimed? Land of the pilgrim's pride, of taking a land that didn't belong to them from people who showed them how to survive and call them friend. Of thee I sing the song of a stolen people, the song of 
of people who have been abused, misused, paid their dues, cried the blues. Oh yes, it's true, and the perpetrator was you. From every mountainside that witnessed the lynchings, that held the blood, that knows the truth, let freedom ring, ring loud and clear till the reality of this day is all washed away till the shame of the past proclaims the love that will last till the plowshares and injustice no longer has a place and everyone is treated as equal members of the human race thank you michael for that request The next poem is going to be from my inner city blues as well. Oh, um, uh, it's okay. Uh, and it is called. A lie is a lie. Now, I know we all know someone who has lied. And truth be told, you may have told one or two yourself. I would get upset when people lied to me, especially when it would happen, it would be people whom I cared about. So I release these words. And releasing words is how I deal with a lot of things a lot of times. It's called a lie is a lie. Small lies are bit bad as big lies. Skip what you heard. Small lies are bad as big lies, and both of them hurt. What goes through your mind when you open your mouth and say things you know are not true? Do you simply assume people will believe you because you are you? No, baby. You are not fooling anyone. You're only playing yourself and making yourself look dumb. Are you sure you're having fun? I know you know when you lie. There's no need for me to bring it to your attention. You know when you are lying. So why do you think I'm trying to listen? Small lies are bad as big lies. The size really doesn't matter. A lie is a lie is a lie is a lie. And don't think they make you look any better. If you really knew how it makes you look, you'd find something else to do and stop trying to be a crook. A lie is a lie is a lie is a lie. When will you get it through your head? Everyone knows when a person lies, you can't believe anything they have said. You know you can stop lying. Just stop and tr start trying to speak the truth, no matter the cost. Take back your power. Start speaking truth, minute by minute, hour by hour. God will help you. So stand up today. You don't have to be a coward. A small lie is bad as a big lie. Both will cause your soul to be lost. Are you sure you're willing to die for a lie? To me, it seems like a useless cause. Of course. The decision is up to you. You have the power to decide your fate. I hope you choose to do the right thing. Please stop lying before it's too late. Oh my. So since I'm doing some of my favorite poets, I thought I'd do some of my favorite poems. I will take that water now. I will take the water now. Thank you. I had to get some more water. <laughs> This one is called, I Just Can't. 
For me, black lives have always mattered. I also see the other hues and cultures as beautiful creations of God, and they are my brothers and sisters. While this is not a technical book, okay, I do believe that there is enough common knowledge to support that Africa is the cradle of civilization. Uh, I don't want to debate about this to overshadow the fact that we are all human. And as humans, we should be concerned about each other. I further believe that I am because you are, and you are because I am. Now, having established the depth of my concern for humanity, I must say that I came to the point one day after seeing numerous uh, police killings of unarmed black men, women, and children, babies, the mistreatment and murders of my sisters and the, by their parents from domestic violence, the babies being trafficked as slaves and the suicide of our children because they have no other love. They think nobody loves them. The realities just made me want to scream. And I wondered, was I alone in my disdain for the ills of society that plague us today? I just decided, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I just can't. I just can't take it anymore. Crime and violence keeping me silent. My children are dying. I just can't watch and not say no to what's going on today. If it's not the police, it's the politics. If not the politics, it's the sick if not the war game, it's the drug game. They're all one and the same. If not that, we got the gun bill. And we can't even eat because the water kills. And you say, take a chill pill. I just can't. I just can't take it anymore. My sister's dying. My sister's swinging on a pole. My sister's dying because she's a mole. Corruption, prejudice, and ignorance ignorance running free, screwing people like you and me, while others praying to our God, where could he be, while my brother's hanging from a tree. I just can't. I just can't take it anymore. He pope alive. Let love abide. Where did we, where can we hide? What's going on? Where did we go wrong? How do we find our way home? It's hard to see past the stopping and blocking and locking and popping and dropping and cries, Lord, help me. I just can't watch another suicide, homicide, genocide. Too short is this life to deal with this strife. Who has the vision to change these decisions, to change the plight, to show the light, to bring a new way that will make us say, I want to live and not die. I want to survive. I want to help those that I can. And I want to grow up and be the best me that I can be. I want to help those that I, that I can and respect my fellow man, woman, and child. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. And you shouldn't either. This next poem is something I wrote in those deep, dark days. I think sometimes people, especially those that you think are strong, go through some type of depression. And sometimes we need to put a face with the voice or, or person 
in order to make a connection. And I remember when I understood that I was definitely in a war and I could not afford to lose the war. I understood that I may lose the battle or two, but the war would not be over until the end came. I was beginning to understand a little deeper about God and I noticed that when I write my poems, my poems were in, in hope. And I would see that God was the best possible hope for me. I know lately we've had a lot of suicide and we have a lot of people that don't feel love. They feel alone, desperate. And sometimes they suffer in silence. And you don't even get a clue before it, until it's too late. This one is called Fighting with Death, and it's from my long journey book. Death is the enemy that I'm fighting. He looks so good. Has more to offer than anything I can see that I need. Death looks awfully good to me. Death don't love me. Death means me no good. But he doesn't lead me on. I know for sure. If I, that he does not care about me. Death doesn't hurt me in small little ways. I know if I take him, the pain will either be non-stop or final. Death looks like a good way out. He looks so fine, like the man I can't have. He feels so secure, like the arms I don't have. He smells so enticing, like the voice I don't smell. He fills my fantasies, like the fullness I long for. An elopement with death. Hmm. Now that's a thought. Well, let's see. All I've talked about is death, not God. So maybe this is like Peter. When he took his eyes off of God, he began to fall. We gotta keep our eyes on the Lord, in my opinion. I am sitting down, you all, in a chair, and a lot of it has to do with having a lot of issues wrong with my back, fractures and things like that, and fractures in my toes. So I'm in a lot of pain. But there's something about this healthcare system that just boggles my brain. And this poem is called Responsible Health from my Inner City Blues. Okay, people, we better wake up. We better start taking responsibility for where we are and stop trying to pass the buck. How much did you say you love yourself? Well, I can't tell by the way you treat your health. We allow the poisons in our food and air and walk around like they're not going to affect us. Yeah, I can tell you care. Responsible, right? Our minds are being fed junk and programmed to a reality we know we don't want to live with. Did I hear you say anything? Did I see you do anything? Or is it just me? You say there's nothing you can do? Did you try? Why did you stop trying? Are you saying that you would rather live a lie? Let me hear it again. That pitiful, helpless sigh. What have we put into the universe? What positive thoughts and feelings have we sent out? If you believe in the law of retribution where you reap what you sow, how come you're not sowing? 
Did you say anything when I said we have to be responsible? I know I don't have to run down the current state of affairs we live with daily. Just tell me, what are we teaching our future generation? And we have the audacity to say they are our future. Future what? Again, I have to say, we must be more responsible. I am going to be realistic. And I'm not going to even suggest we try to change the whole world. I just want to challenge us to change ourselves. If we put demands on ourselves to live the best life we can live, to love ourselves in all aspects, we will move from our present existence into optimal health that affects and affects our community, health, mind, body, and soul. At this time, I will take another request. You're speaking, but you're on mute. Huh? Yeah. Yes, I hear you now. Okay. Um, could you read uh, in a box? I didn't hear. In a box. In a box. All right. Thank you. In a box is from a long journey. This poem is one I wrote as I was going through one of my depressions. I remember thinking how I felt. I, I felt like I was in a grave and there was this box slanted in the ground. I drew a picture over the poem and it had drugs and mirrors and things that I felt were attacking me in my warped state of normalcy. I pictured myself in a box. I'm in a box enclosed in this vessel. I am not alone. Hurt is here. Pain is here. A little joy is here. And God is here. I feel like it would be better to be dead than I wouldn't have to live with hurt and pain and their invited guests, pity and helplessness. But God is here so I can hold on. I'm so tired of living like this. I feel like a compassionate person would not allow someone to go through this, but thy grace is, O oh Lord, is sufficient for thee. Am I suffering that God may get the glory, or am I always failing my test? Is this that all that life will hand me, or dare I pray for something else? Wrap your arms around me, Jesus, because I need some love. Speak to me, Lord, because I need your manna from above. Walk with me, God. I need your help along the way. Live in me, Jesus, to guide me, least I stray. This box that I'm in seems like I can see it deep in the earth. The box is laying slanted and the cries can be heard by no one else. Outside the box, I see booze, drugs, games, and things I used to do before I was saved. Looking from the inside out, things look even worse. I don't want to bring the outside in, nor do I want to stay inside. I know I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but I want to walk 
in the liberty that Jesus gave to me. Pray for me. Pray long and hard. Pray for me because I believe in prayer and that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Pray God helps me with this stuff. And until he answers, I will remember that whatever shape I find myself in to be content for his grace is sufficient for me. Thank you for that. I remember um, coming back to the States from living in Mannheim, West Germany, back in the days, and I had asked um, my neighbors how to keep my shape, because I was young and I had a pretty good shape and stuff, and I was thinking, you know, well, get some um, diet pills or some drugs or something. The, the, the pills, the vitamins, and all of that stuff was giving me a headache. It was like they were poisoning my system. So I decided that I could make myself throw up and that food wouldn't stick to me and I couldn't gain weight. <laughs> and I asked my neighbors, and my neighbors said, oh, yeah, go ahead. Sometimes people don't give you good advice. That was not helpful. But I, it caused me to end up spending like eight years being bulimic. And I know a lot of people are bulimic and they suffer in silence. And I didn't realize that it was even wrong until I came back from Germany and Oprah Winfrey was on and there was someone talking about this and it gave me a name and one day I was in the bathroom purging and it was like the Lord hit me upside the head and said you know this is like slapping me in the face I'm like, well, I, that's not what I wanted to do. I thought about it, and I said, you know, God has given me this body to, and he has blessed me to be able to digest my food and to be able to have food. And for me to throw it up is like saying, I don't appreciate you. And that's a slap in the face, and that was not what I wanted to do. And that caused me to stop. Praise God. When I was going through seminary, I decided to do my thesis on that. And it was called, Can Christian Education Help People with Bulimia? And of course it can. Well, this next poem is Liberated Angela. And I said, I'm going to be me. I can be me, I can be free. I don't have to accept what society tells me I must be. My hair, my dress, my weight, my feet, my speech, and even my teeth is what I choose to represent me. I don't need your approval. I won't accept your shame. I'm not going to pay to be someone else and force my true self to live in pain. You can do what you want. Find you another scapegoat for your fear. Get you someone else to torment because you won't play that game here. My dignity and my respect is not up for discussion. I know who I am and whose I am and that you can be trusted. You talking to me? Talk to me about something I don't see. Help me understand something I don't know. But that jealousy and fear? Hmm. You know where you can go. I can be free. I will be free. I'm going to stay free because I'm going to be me. 
I'm going to be me. I'm going to be me. So you can take me as I am. My voluptuous curves, my sweet tender lips, only compensate the radius of my tempting juicy hips. They belong to me. And I choose to allow you to stare. I will even allow you to imagine the scent of my hair. See, this, fi this physical outside only hides the other beauty you can't see with the naked eye. The spiritual things God gave me in eternity. So don't get trapped by this beautiful physical frame. Because there is much, much more to me. Don't waste your time trying to control or change me. I'm going to be me. Like it or not. Love you too. This next poem is one that I know Jenny likes. And Jenny Kessler is on here. And um, Katanya Hart is on here. And I appreciate you too. You are such good supporters for me. And she said that she really liked Christ is the answer, and I want to do that one before I do my last one. Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer for the world today. Christ is the answer for man to be saved. Christ is the answer for the question today on how to find peace, joy, happiness, hope, self-esteem, anything that's troubling you, just take it to Jesus. He knows what to do. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. This I know is true, for he is my marvelous friend, and he's waiting to love you too. You can't run, and you can't hide from his power. You can refuse to let him in, but you're still going to need him every hour. Christ is the answer for all the world today. And yet sometimes we find it hard to pray, to offer up praises and to say thank you, to say I'm sorry I sinned or that I love you too. Christ is the answer and he paid the price, but we still won't let him in to straighten out our life. We think we're bad, undeserving and cool, we're only fooling ourselves. Jesus can fix that too. His grace is sufficient for thee. We must use what we are given. To let Christ control our life, we must be willing. Christ is the answer, no matter what the problem is. With Christ in your life, you can really live. Turn to him for comfort before it's too late. My last poem is called The Message. I say, I don't know if I have that in my book. the message. I want to thank you all for coming and you have been a wonderful audience. I want to thank Michael Marshall and Reverend Mor Moria F Santino for your help and I pray that you all have enjoyed yourself and take this message and all the rest of the poems along with you. As people I have a message. People, please listen to me. 
The message is a freedom and a reminder of our mission. Because our leaders have died, it is no reason for us not to keep on fighting. For we must still fight. Fight for the right to be free. Free and equal to the whites. Black people are still crying. And our leaders are still dying. But we must not give up. We must keep on fighting. People, the time has come. We've got to let them know where we're coming from. Don't you still believe that we shall overcome? People, please listen to me. Open your eyes. The truth is here for all to see. This message is to the people. Brothers, sisters, young and old. The message is of freedom. And the message I have told. I have come, said my message, and prayed my children won't have to live in pain. And if I could only help somebody, then my living will not be in vain. The message. Good night. God bless you all. Oh, thank you, Angela. And thank you for thanking me. I had stepped away. I had thank stepped you. away for a moment. And that's when you were talking to me. So I want you to know that I am here. I always support you. Thank you so much. You guys, I know that a lot of you don't live in West Virginia, but this is one of the hardest working women in <laughs> West Virginia. She is on so many committees and she does wonderful work. And she's not new to this. She is true to this. Okay, I don't know how many committee she's not uh, I want to give you a moment to just say something I know you need a lot of help <laughs> well definitely we need a lot of help we just had our largest number of African Americans turn out to our state capitol for black policy day and so not only was I able to stand for the Crown Act to be passed in West Virginia and give the understanding that it's not about hair, it is about deregulating those mores that were put in place during uh, the tie-on laws and during slavery and how the point of view that African Americans are illegal from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet need to just the same as it was legislated in, we need to legislate it out and that we have a voice and need to be paid attention to. In addition to that, the idea that here in West Virginia, they are introducing laws to censor history in our schools. In 1974, West Virginia, Kanawha County had what was known as the book wars with at least one person dying and schools being blown up and children being harassed on bus by individuals because a book was introduced that had diversity in it. The same thing just happened in Pocahontas County, where a teacher was tortured to the point that she quit her job, moved her husband and her five-year-old child, not out of the school district, but out of the state for sake of safety. These are the kind of laws that they're trying to introduce in our state. And we are not just going to sit idly by and allow this to happen. And so from working on those bills being passed, but also working one to the other, or two or three are gathered, there's power in the midst. And so though you may stand alone as a beacon, that beacon calls to others and we are organizing to protect, to share, to make sure individuals have what they need, that those we are now electing are representing us and have our voices on hand. All these things are so extremely important to, to walk those parallel roads in order to make sure there's success for the people and that we stand and find what our purpose is. God has a purpose for each and every one of us and we must dwell in that purpose and we must accept what another per person's purpose may be in the body of Christ. So we're going along. Um, definitely funds are always needed uh, to reach out to support. You can't sometimes pay a person's uh, light bill with a hallelujah. They actually want, they actually want dollars. Can you imagine? So 
<laughs> you know, and uh, we have some gardens that are growing in, a, in the city so that we can feed each other. We have an attempt being made to put tiny houses in parking lots so that our homeless can have a place to stay, to stay. Um, and simply learning how to write those op-ed pieces and create those campaigns that are of our voice, for us, by us. And so those are just some of the things I'm trying and to get you, done. That, that was beautiful. But um, tell us about what you, the resting thing, when everyone was getting arrested. Oh. <laughs> yes, well, yes. Let's start with, there was a need. We went and we did the flotilla protest in D.C. Let's start there. And we, you know, Joe Manchin is uh, our, our, you know, he's from here. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> Cause it's a mess. <laughs> um, we we also have Capitol, but uh, you know, she's doing her job as who she was elected to be. But Joe is supposed to be our favorite son, advocating for us for the last forty years. And so we went and we did the flotilla, where we floated in kayaks around his uh, yacht in D.C. until he came out to speak with us, and we set an appointment. It seemed very positive. But a month later, he still had not moved on what it seemed like he was going to do. And it's interesting, do you, if you call it a lie of omission or is it deception or what have you, we went back out there to have a waiting room protest in front of his office building in DC where we set up all the chairs like a waiting room and we sat and would not be moved even when the officers came and it was just something about the fact that the night before I had received a message that a friend of mine had passed away. And a friend that was present for the situation said, I've seen what they can do in the hospital and I know they didn't do all they could because they didn't have insurance. And so a preventable death, what appears to be in a preventable death occurred because person didn't have coverage. And here's Manchin trying not to pass. He did not as we stand on this side of it uh, of course, we didn't know at that time, just trying to persuade him and tell him our stories and let him know we are real people because our first visit at the end, he said, only organizations were coming to visit me. And I said, I'm a real person. I'm not an organization. I'm a person. And so that was my first time in my whole life was in D.C. where I was arrested. And they came and took us away. And I told them, I mean, I was just there and I was just like. I'm not going to just move. I just can't give up that easy. And so from there, we came back home and more turmoil. We had a vigil outside of his office here in West Virginia. We went to where his uh, condo is. We looked at how to get on the water to float around his house in Morgantown. Um, so on Martin Luther King Day, we decided we would block Martin Luther King way and try to get his attention. And again, he was in town, as far as we knew he was in town and try to get his attention that we are very much serious and, and, and do some interrupting of people's day to day. And it was a blizzard that had happened the day before we stood in the cold and, uh, it came down to it after a couple hours or so that the police came and again they arrested us but the interesting thing that goes along with that for me is as the only african-american person arrested they pulled me out of line and they put me in the cage and then they tried to lock the cage and i said why are you locking me in here everybody else was on a bench and so that's when they took another person, another woman, and she put her, put her in the cage with me, but it didn't change that they had me in there alone. And I was complaining, I was complaining about them trying to shut the door when the sergeant came and he finally took me out. And then he sat me on the bench. So this is what I don't understand. There was always another seat on the bench where they could have placed me, but they removed me from everybody else and put me into their cell until I had I, I started protesting. I mean, nothing wild, but why, what is happening here? Um, so overall, we have been arraigned. Um, we have a hearing come March 2nd. Uh, they say that uh, it can be anywhere from 24 hours to five years. 
uh, the judge can rule on us. And um, so that's where we are. They said if we break any laws or anything be before our hearing, that we actually could go into South Central Regional Jail. They attempted to put us in uh, the regional jail at that time when they had arrested us. This is a jail that for three weeks, the pipes had been burst, that they had no running water, that the inmates were living on outhouses. And that was dictated by if you had privileges or not, how you could go out to the to the bathroom or clean yourself. This is where they saw the, it is the highest rate of COVID. It is where the women's prison is built for 380 something and it has over 700 inmates living there. This is where they will sought to put us overnight. This is where they're telling us they're going to put us if we break even jaywalking. So this is what we're doing here to just try to stand up and tell them it's really important that he pay attention to the people because now they've broken Build Back Better into pieces and are trying to see how to get those different pieces put through. So this is where we are still trying to move the powers that be and then remove, as we come to the midterm elections, remove some of these powers that be. <laughs> we, we shall not, we shall not be moved. No. We, we shall, shall not, not, we shall not, not be moved like, like a tree planted by the water. We, we shall not be moved. God bless you, sister. God bless you. We were Amen. out there. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you all. We know you would have been out there because you were out there all those other times. You had your own bullhorn out there directing people. <laughs> she took over some people's protests. We were up at the Capitol and she was with her bullhorn. And so she was directing people to the left, to the right. Stand here, do this. She had her little beret on. She was all about the military beret. It's just when, when her spirit come into a room, everybody else is just step in line. Step in line. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, bless you. We appreciate all the hard work you're doing. We're praying for you. And don't worry, we're going to try to send some, some type of funds. Okay. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. We During the Crown Rally, we had high school students, young ladies turn out, Capitol High School, first time participating and wanting to know more how to participate in their politics, understanding, getting an understanding on how these things impact their lives and taking a lead role in something they were interested in and learning how to make it work. About 10, 15 young ladies stepping up to the line uh, Friday for our day, Black Policy Day of Action. That's awesome. I say that so. The, the state president came uh, for the NAACP. We had the representative of Washington, D.C. He drove in, he and his assistant, to be present. We had uh, Maryland. NAACP travel in and want to make connections with all of us and as I'm one of the vice presidents of the state NAACP was able to broker some deals to further reaching out to the African-American population about COVID um, and getting those vaccinations done and sharing those stories but mainly rolling through into this midterm elections with possible individuals to actually take a stand and maybe run for office, let alone support those who support us and understand we can't vote along party lines. We have to vote the issue. And so truly God has put in everyone's heart, right and wrong, the 10 commandments. They're written right there and we know what is right. Amen. We just gotta help people hear it. And so, yeah, that's some of the work that we're doing get going across the state. Amen. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. All your work is, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You got to come home to West Virginia. <laughs> okay. All right. All Reverend right. Bamford, Matt has signed off for the evening. He said yeah. thank you to you and Reverend Nora and to Katonia for her work. How inspiring. And I also want to let you know that uh, Reverend uh, Nertis Dick Myers from Emmanuel Baptist Church and his wife were on the live feed. And they said, thank you for your witness and encouragement. And then Mr. Stewart has got lots of praise and amens. And uh, Ingrid Phillips, also on the live stream oh. on Facebook, had lots to say. Amen. Oh, all of those beautiful people. <sighs> My father in the ministry. Um, Reverend Stewart. That's, that's my father in, in the ministry. He taught me a whole lot. Amen. God bless you all. Does anybody else want to say anything before we close? Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Thank you again, you all. God bless you. We thank God for you all being here. May God go with you all in Jesus' name. Good night. And also with you. Amen.